Coming up, we'll meet an inspiring group of Korean American mothers who are helping to feed hungry children worldwide. These teenagers are making a real difference in their community, and it's spanning the generations. And celebrate Women's Health Month by taking care of yourself and enjoying a night out with the girls. Hi, I'm Linda McHugh. Welcome to our April show. The Global Children Foundation, which helps feed hungry children, was started by three Korean-American mothers in 1998, following the economic crisis in Korea. Today, the organization has 21 chapters worldwide and feeds children in 41 countries. Fort Lee resident Ashley Yook is the president of the New Jersey chapter. She and her dedicated volunteers have already raised more than $90,000 for the foundation. More than 1.3 million, you know, children are starving around the world. In the U.S. alone, more than half a million children are starving. You guys are all making a difference and it's so important and you do it because of friendship and love. Foley always makes me proud, but when you come here and you know what the design of this foundation is to feed children, it makes me especially proud. The most recent fundraiser was a bazaar held at the Doubletree Hilton. But prior to that, Ashley and a large group of volunteers rolled up their sleeves and put their cooking skills to good use. My first event was kimchi making. Kimchi is a Korean cabbage. Between 35 and 40 members joined me making kimchi for two days, and it was really successful. My second event was uh, dumpling making. And we made more than 6,500 dumplings. If you think you know, your kids are hungry out there or uh, around the community, I mean, who wouldn't uh, help? As a mother, not only this uh, foundation changing uh, kids all around the world for ourselves as well. I'm the one of moms, so I heard about this, you know, the global children company issue. So I'm really, you know, great feeling. So I got feel from the Ashley and from the Great Children Foundation. You know, whatever it's involved with the kids, it breaks my heart. So this is our, I believe this is our responsibility to help them. Everything uh, the, we uh, collect the money send to the organization and they spend all the money to the children. So 100% of the proceeds does 100%. go to the foundation? 100%. Surprisingly, the way my communities around companies I mean, have been supporting us greatly. So, so far as we have actually more than 50 companies are participating. We're here to support the community especially this organization that helps feed children worldwide. Children are the foundation to society and so we need to make sure that they're healthy. Hopefully they we're going to bring this community together as a team. Stop hunger, start sharing. Community service for teens is often a requirement for high school graduation, but volunteer work for young adults can be a life-changing experience, one that helps expand their horizons and fosters meaningful relationships. Fort Lee teenagers have become a valuable resource for the public library. They bring to the library their enthusiasm and vitality, as well as their computer skills and fresh ideas. It's really rewarding. Myra is volunteering her time today at the library's drop-in tech lab, designed to help senior citizens like 87-year-old Morty with their technology-related questions. For us, because we grew up with it, for us it's really natural to do, so it's, and it's always nice to help people. They've always been helpful and solved my problems and uh, I didn't have to go to professionals, you know, and they're just as good and knowledgeable and uh, fast. I just come here every week and like I help um, either the same person or like a new person would like just help on their like phone or iPad or laptop or any like technology questions that they have. They say it's never too late to learn and of course Manmeet has made it a wonderful experience. She answers my questions to the point and sees that I get it. I kind of see them as like grandmas for me. There's a great intergenerational program and I think everybody really benefits and gets a lot out of it, including the teens. Volunteers also take part in Shelfie Fridays to help arrange books and keep things in order. Others, like Carlos, donate their time to the Reading Buddies program. 
I do like to read with the kids. I feel like it's such an influence on them, and it's, you know, it's kind of fun to read with them, pass the time with them. You know, it's always something fun to do. What did you think of your reading buddy today? It was fantastic. <laughs> Last year in 2017, our student volunteers completed over 600 hours of service here at the library. So it's a program we're very proud of. I think they're giving back to the society so beautifully and giving their time and knowledge and seeing both young and old go a few steps ahead and feel more confident. I will say thank you so much. They're so patient, they're so understanding. It brings something out of them that we don't see, and I, I think um, many times a lot of people don't think of when they think of teens, so it's, it's, really, it's really wonderful. I think we get like a bad rep for not doing enough or not doing anything at all or being too self-absorbed or whatever, but I think there are maybe some of us that you know, do try to help and do, do activities that you know, not just benefit us, benefit others. It's never too early or too late to make healthy changes to look and feel your best. In honor of Women's Health Month, which is coming in May, the borough is challenging women to take control of their health. There are about 15 diagnostic medical tests that we want all women to have. And they range from cholesterol to bone density to pap smears to mammograms. And we also want women to exercise, to live a healthy lifestyle, not to smoke. The message is go get your checkups. Raise awareness for early detection. I lost both parents to colon cancer. They were both 70. They never had any screenings. I've been going for colonoscopy since I'm 30, every five years, and I've been fine. 100 businesses are expected to decorate their stores again this year to help paint the town pink during the month of May in honor of Women's Health Awareness. Close to 75 women attended last year's Paint and Sip event. So if you haven't already signed up for this year's event, now is the time to reserve your spot. We are warriors. It's the year of the woman. Let's be at 100% health so we can fight for the woman. May 7 through 12 is Fort Lee Fashion Week, offering the finest in shopping, dining, and services that the town has to offer. The six-day event will culminate with a fashion show highlighting notable local businesses and guest designers. Mark your calendars so you don't miss Fort Lee's first fashion week. You can go on to discoverfortlee.com or fortleechamber.com and get more information and buy your tickets. That wraps up our show. Thanks for joining us again.